Hey guys, and welcome to part 2 on how to create your own scenario in Unveil. Make sure you check part 1 or otherwise this is going to make no sense. Alright, so we are going to draw a map on this one. Make sure you definitely check the package maps documentation. This is really important for this part. Anyways, we're going to jump on it. So, this is a map, right? We're back on Windows. And... Uh, well, as you can see, I have put some, some initial padding so you can't reach the edges. Nothing will happen, but it will be really odd. So I, at least make sure there is at least two or three tiles away uh, from the edge of the screen in any, any edge. Um, so players understand that no, you can't go through it or yes, you can go through it. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But for now, what we're going to do is uh, we're gonna take a look a little bit about on, on stuff you can actually use. So I know you can find like a lot of like fancy stuff that you never see in the game. That is because I never deleted them. These are bound to change. You can use them if you want, to, but really uh, I wouldn't do it because uh, many of these may actually disappear whenever the game releases, right? But uh, I guess for the time being, you know, go nuts. This is actually uh, a, what you use for the bushes and this is um, something you, you can and should use, right? And you can do all sorts of like fancy stuff. And yes, I guess you could do technically like, uh, you know, a maze and, and go nuts and uh, do a maze with, with bushes and, and so on. I guess that, that is a thing you could do and uh, it wouldn't be terrible, you know, <laughs> that would be cool to see. So yeah, definitely uh, let your creativity, you know, go nuts. That, that is like the most terrible maze. Well, I'm not trying to make a maze really, but you get the idea. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Uh, that's the idea of modding, isn't it? No? So uh, that that's the thing. Okay, I need to finish it or I'm gonna feel bad all day. All right, there we go. So this is not a maze, but you can make one. Now, um, on the top, you're gonna find a pond. All right, this is really important. This is the pond on which you can actually drink from. All right, this is the pond you see. By putting the pond in, it is enough so the player can interact with it and so it goes dry whenever it does, all right? So bear that in mind and you can do stuff like this. Of course, make make sure that if you do something, something like this, this leads somewhere, okay? this ha There has to be another map on the other side that continues this in this exact same way because otherwise that, that's gonna be silly because whenever this dries out, the player is going, going to be able to go through this, all right? So bear that in mind. Then on here, um, we have these three that we actually use. We don't use this one, but we use these three for the cliffs, all right? So I can do stuff like this, right? And, and do something like this, right? Now, bear in mind that the player will be able to climb this, so you need to remember all this, that the player can climb one tile uh, tall cliffs, but he can't climb two tile tall cliffs, and that is so hard to say. Um, However, you can do fancy stuff, like an example, you can make it so that, you know, uh, you can have a division between two areas, right? So that, you know, maybe you do something like this and like this, and, and then you have, well, something blocking the way, whatever that is, well, I can do, like an example this, right? So you get the idea. So that way, you know, you can't go from here to here, right? It's impossible because you can't climb two tiles tall, but you can, uh, if you're on the other side, because I don't know, water went down or there is another way, you can backtrack back, right? By just climbing this one, climbing this one, and then dropping a long climbing vine from, from the top. So that is a way to create, um, um, sorry, a back, uh, like a very smart uh, backtracking uh, method so you can, you know, let your players unlock new areas and then don't make it harder for them to keep going back and forth, right? Like, you unlocked it, great, your reward is that you can, you get to go back and forth more, more efficiently as long you're willing to put in the investment for it. There are other ways to do this, um, to block passage, and one of them is using this one right here. Uh, you, can hear, you can see in the top left, and that is this hole that you can actually, oh wow, okay, I never tried that, so. Um, this hole you can actually uh, build bridges on. You can build them horizontally or vertically if you may, uh, according to our perspective. You cannot build them diagonally and you cannot build them if they're two tiles thick, all right? So you cannot build one here, you can't build one here for sure, you can't build one here either, all right? Uh, oh, look at that, it's quite glitchy, huh? huh never tried it. Anyways, but you can build it here, all right? And that takes resources as you would expect. 
So um, just by putting one of these, it just works automatically. It is just automatically recognized. And then on here, on the top um, right side of all this, you can see the um, the C uh, tile. And there, there's another one of something that I tried to do before that doesn't work, but you can use this one, all right? And this is this is the C. Uh, make sure there is sand around it, or the game won't let you interact with it. That is a thing. You need to have like well, at least one tile of sand around it. I, look, I'm, I made an veil to for myself, right? So uh, you know, if anybody's gonna mod it, they need to bear in mind some stuff. All right. So at least one tile around it, so you can actually inter interact with with the wa water, or it, it is going to assume you're like on a cliff or something. That is because a RPG Maker doesn't really keep good track of height. Like this is just a, at the same height of this. Like it, it doesn't matter for it. Anyways. So uh, that way you can actually interact with the water, you can fish on it if you set the, the correct settings to do so, so that is pretty much how it works. Then you can set the trees uh, on, on the B tab, you can find the trees, there are, there's a, just a lot of more junk that I don't use. And what you can do is, you, know, you, you see how this is laid out, and then you just click on the same portion of it on the trees and then you just extend it, right? If you, you just do it anywhere, like like here, it's going to look weird, like you can see this is like clipped, like clipped like this looks bad, you can see that, right? So don't do that. You need to make sure that whenever you click, nothing changes and then you just extend it, right? Then of course, whenever you do this, you're gonna be encountering to, with the issue that you need to actually manually, you know, add all the portions of it. That's how you do it. Uh, you can keep adding more trees all around, by, oh, whoops, by just doing like single clicks. And of course, if you wanna do something fancy, like two together, you can just do that and then just add this tile right here. And that is just regular RPG Maker stuff, nothing too fancy there. But just so you know, um, most stuff here is not used except for the palm trees. There we go, you can put the palm tree here. It makes sense to have it like here as well. So you get an idea. And then we have the C tab. On the C tab, we're gonna find some more useful stuff. This is a big tree that we can lay down and we're gonna put one here. Right, that that comes with a shadow that actually doesn't work. I'm gonna talk about it about it later, and we also get um, this sort of like indent that we can use, a simple indent and one that actually provides shadows, and we can actually remove. We're just gonna put grass here, as you can see, and I'm just gonna use this one on the top. Right, this one has like little shadows on the left and right side. That is for like whenever it's actually on the very edge, but that's not the case for me right now. So I'm gonna put this in here and that's actually how it works you can actually extend it all the way so i can do something like this all right and that's gonna work just as good although i actually want to go this way um i know you can see like there's like shadows in here that you can add or remove but the game will automatically remove all of the shadows so you do not have to do it manually that is because some shadows don't really add up so i just removed it all together and then on the you have some new other stuff you can't really use. There is no point on using this. Although I guess you could use the stairs. That is still a thing you can use. And this is actually like stairs you can just climb up and down. You don't need to construct. You don't need to do anything. You can just go up and down. So, so that is something actually I don't like it there. So I'm just gonna gonna put it. I'm gonna do something like this. Okay, there we go. Much much fancier. All right, there we go. So, um, this is for back. This is for backtracking, but I, I don't use it anymore. But basically, if you have this, the player will be able to jump from the top to the bottom, but not go back. It's kind of silly because it's it's of a lesser height than this, which is something you can climb. So it's kind of silly. So I don't use it anymore. I don't know. Don't use it. This should be deleted. I don't know why it's still here, but that's that's that has to be deleted. But anyways, that is pretty much all that you have here. Then there's more crap. You can complete one of these cliffs if you have to manually, but besides that, uh, that is all there is to it. Don't use grass. I repeat, do not use grass. Don't use grass. Don't use grass. Uh, I think it will crash the game whenever you interact with it. I don't know. I may have to fix it. We'll see. Anyways. So, uh, you can also make the back transparent by using this style right here, right? So you can make everything transparent and you may go, well, why would I want to do that? Well, in case you are like on the top of a mound or something, you can add a parallax and that's when you can actually double click a map. Oops, uh, actually press, press the space bar and uh, you get to see, you know, the name, which is an internal name for you. That doesn't matter. Um, and you get to set the parallax, which is mountains, the one you want to use. So, you know, you see mountains on the back. Uh, nothing that you said here will matter. Uh, 
except for the loop, but don't activate this, it may actually break the game. Pretty confident that it will. Um, this is the size. Now, I strongly recommend that for open world, um, open air or outside maps, you keep the 60 by 34 formula. People know this. Um, they, they can calculate the distance between one place or, or another according to how many maps they went through, right? Because they're all the same size. Uh, it's a perfect size to remember all this, to remember the, the lengths. Uh, it's a perfect size to explore a map without feeling overwhelmed. Remember, there is no minimap in unveil so don't punish your players by making this too big uh, and there's enough space to do all kind of like fancy stuff or even add secret places that are, uh, are out of the player's side bear in mind that whenever the player pl is playing they see pretty much just about this right and they're located like in the middle this is more or less like the vision so if you add like a thick layer of, of, of trees like I like if I do here right so like this uh, you can actually have like a secret area right here that they can't see, right? Because it's just way too farther from what they can actually see. So you get an idea. Now, I know you get to see the tile sets. Now, this is just for demonstration purposes only. So you can actually see how it would look. And of course, be able to see the tiles or, you know, on the cave version of it to actually see the tiles as well. But um, you can actually activate the dry version if you want to see how it would look whenever it goes dry. And that is pretty much it. And you can see you can actually go through it. So, you know, maybe you will kick you in the in the in the head and go oh yeah i need to change that so that's a thing but remember unveil is going to override this and put the right one wh whether it's a cave or outside or what have you uh automatically all right these are self-managed and that is uh managed by the weather engine all right and then of course we have a cave now cave make sure um there is enough space to the sides, so you can never really get close to the edge to the point the camera actually gets stuck and the player moves alone. Make sure you, you watch that out. Uh, also bear in mind that you do not have light inside of a cave, so like at this point players can't see anything, right? Now, um, and there's a few more things that I need to talk about, and one of them is actually, well, it's the um, the spawnables where you define where the stuff spawn and of course the shelters but first before we do that I want to introduce to you to the settings of a map and then at the very end we'll come back to it all right so if we go here we're gonna find that inside scenario we have a folder called maps this is not from RPG maker this is, this is from unveil and it comes with a, a starting file called zero.json this is actually something like a template you should actually duplicate, right? And in this case, we're going to use 6.json because this map is number 6, as you can see on the bottom right. Right, this is 6. And this, this will allow us to set the settings for the map number 6. Again, the starting area. So we're going to double click it, we're going to open it up. And uh, we're going to see right here that we have a name, which is the visible name for the map. We can actually have a visible name like starting point or something like that or we can just leave it in null right like this not a string but just null so that there's nothing displayed then we can set the flora right now which kind of flora like what names do, do you put in right well i mean here you have some examples like coconut only one of them small tree only one of them branch only one of them you can change it change it to three sticks and uh, three branches and four sticks although you can actually come here and on the package maps, right? That is gamepedia, unveil.gamepedia.com slash package underscore maps. And you can find uh, in here uh, all of the code, code names for the flora, right? Because in here you will find the documentation for this JSON file. So you do, you do not need to remember everything, but uh, you will be able to see everything that you can actually use. And uh, we can actually add a Twiggy plant. We're gonna do that, All right? So we're gonna copy and paste this. And we're gonna add a Twiggy plant right here. We're gonna add two of them. There we go. That's how you do it, right? Pretty straightforward. Now, then we have the weather mod. This is fairly lengthy. I don't wanna get into it on this video, but you're gonna find, find it, explain it here. And basically you can add or subtract value to the, to the temperature just for this map. And this does not affect the simulation, just the apparent uh, temperature for all the objects and the uh, 
and the character and so on and same with the sun heat and sunlight and rain and humidity and wind speed and so on weather so you can make an area that you know it just never rains by multiplying it to zero right or you can make an area that it's always raining even if it doesn't make sense even if it's not raining in the world by just adding like a hundred and that's it uh, or you can make a place that is always humid with by adding 50 that's actually quite crazy but you get it yeah actually you usually do not want to add it you want to multiply existing values so it's a little bit more natural so if it's really that dry it just won't be that humid period there should shouldn't be that ma that much changes in the weather from map to map but you know if you're getting higher and higher on a mountain maybe you you want to like reduce the temperature but you want to increase the sun heat and light right some something like that so when so whenever you're in the shadow it's really really cold or actually something like this um it's really 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 cold but whenever you are exposed to the sun it's really 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 hot right so you get that that feeling of going on a mountain right so that's pretty much how you do it uh you can find more information about that again in the documentation and then we have the fauna that is only two kinds you can actually use and it's defined right here it's rat or rabbit you can set two four six you get the idea but pretty much you want to set four if you want to have a fairly good chance of reproduction if you set two there's a good chance one of them dies and they don't reproduce and you know one alone can't reproduce so they will go extinct in that map uh even if you uh, especially if you actually cut catch one of them and if you said six is a very good chance of actually leading to our population with time um so you know four five six even is a good number if you want to make sure there is enough of it and two or one if you just want to have it on on the very beginning and probably with little to no chance of uh reproducing all right if you do not want to have fauna you just delete this right you can also just delete uh, the weather mod and everything will be fine you can just delete flora if you just don't want to have floor a special floor and that's fine you can just delete everything and none of the settings will be loaded and that is fine as well you can even not put this the json file in and that works as well and of course the last one is fish weight now in here you can set the maximum fish weight or you can set a range like uh, in this case um it's 1.1 kilogram that is 1100 grams and i can make it actually between you know 500 and this this so um that way right um there's not gonna be any like very small fishes but there's gonna be a fairly medium to larger i can actually do it like this like larger fishes right so you, this can be like a more secret area to fish where you get better fish but of course you need better equipment like a better fish road rod so you get the idea right you can find again the documentation right here right two different ways you can set this so that is pretty much how you set this now where are these spawning right like where are they gonna be appearing where is the coconut gonna come where is the small tree right like where is this happening well in fact you need to use what are known as uh regions in rpg maker and we can actually find the list of uh, regions and what they do in again game map documentation uh package map sorry i didn't go anywhere and in here you, you can find a list of all the region ids what uh they can spawn and what they do so you can see 55 55 will spawn everything that is on a dry surface like or a rocky surface like rocks sulfur or cactus sulfur usually goes on uh, inside caves all right but you get the idea then of course you can uh, spawn very bushes on 56 57 for coconuts 59 for vines notice there is no 58 anymore and 60 for everything else not included like branches sticks plants trees what have you so you can actually have like just you know, our our plants and so on and branches and sticks just appear all over the place like oh, maybe on this side of the map only right then we can have what is it like coconuts on the 57 so we can actually go ahead and do 57 and put some here and maybe some here one hidden behind the plant and this right um and then we can have uh oh 56 for berry bushes we can do that 56 for berry bushes we're gonna have some here a chance to appear here and here maybe here and here right and uh oh vines 59 all right so we're gonna put vines they they appear on trees so i'm gonna put here 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 right so that that's pretty much how you do it right you need to put in the right locations of course make it make sure you put it uh, somewhere they can actually reach it uh not like say 
here. The, this is an unreachable place and I've done that before and I apologize for it, but I just wasn't paying attention. <laughs> but I fixed them because of your reports. Thank you very much. Now, um, you can see there's also three more, which are 61, 62 and 63. All right. As you can see right here, one is for wind, the other is for the sun or rain, a shelter for uh, for wind, I am sorry, a shelter from, from sun or rain, and a shelter from everything. So, um, shelter from, from wind can be something like this, right? This is protected by walls and so on, maybe this as well, um, maybe this as well could be, you know? Something like that, or maybe, maybe all this even, right? So, something like that. Not on the top, because actually, uh, well, I mean, you can't climb this, climb this, but you get the idea if you did, well, that wouldn't make any sense. Um, and then uh, uh, we have 62 that is for sun or rain. So you're protected from the sun or rain whenever it rains, and that is actually shadows, and that's actually how you do it. And then there's also whenever you're protected from sun rain and wind all together well you uh this is actually a place where you put it like is it this well no because you need to pr be protected from sun and this is from wind okay I'm, I'm gonna put this no because now you're not protected from wind well as you may have read right here uh, 63 solve that by just you know using that instead and this will protect you from everything actually you want to do this for this kind of stuff like right here like like that stuff, you wanna use uh, 63 also on the top uh, tile so players can't climb this because technically this is a one t one tile tall uh, cliff, right? So our, the game will actually make sure that this is also protected from, uh, like this also has a roof so it won't allow the player to climb it. Otherwise it's gonna be glitchy because why on hell would you be able to climb from here to here, right? So that's a thing. So. Uh, that is pretty much it, I believe, for this. Yes, I am checking my notes, and uh, yes, I believe this is pretty much it. You pretty much get a good idea of what you can do in a map. Now, there's a few more things, like how do you do that thing on Unveil, which you automatically, like, it doesn't matter which part of the map, even if the map is like this, has like an aperture like this big, you can still go through at any point and appear on another map right next to it. How do you do that? Well, for that, we're gonna get to the third and last part of this tutorial. But for now, that is all. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on part number three.